Call the Honourable Member, Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My colleague Russell Norman earlier dissected this government's budgetary policy statement 2012 in a constructively merciless way. But the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. That place is not the Treasury benches of Her Majesty's New Zealand Government. It is more naturally the voting public, they who are being denied their rightful place in the global economy. Mercy, we are told, is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. I do not think it will bless a government that takes from the poor and gives to the rich, as this government has done with its misguided tax cuts over the next few years. Mercy, we learn, tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But down here, with our feet pointing towards Stratford-on-Avon, the electoral crown is slipping. The sceptre is falling from the executive grasp, and that is because of the absence of mercy in the budgetary policy of this government. It is because of the lack of vision among its strategic planners, who fail to see the structural distortions in our national economy and the resulting imbalances between it and the global economy. But mercy is above this sceptred sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself, and earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. Mr Speaker, if ever this government deserves a seasoned admonition, it is today when its budget policy statement is up for judgment. There have been three months of global developments to shade the strategic economic canvas of continuing political ineptitude to darken the domestic stage. But it is not only a lack of economic justice and a plea for political mercy that characterises this government's current misfortune. It is, above all, as I said yesterday, an ideological conviction met only by political rigidity and a cautious disposition that will be devil our future. The key government endlessly repeats the mantra of innovation, creativity and entrepreneurship and then cuts the budget that could underwrite these qualities for our next generation. This is manifest in its willful blindness to the issue of macroeconomic concepts. How to measure, for example, our economic well-being, according to the government, only by GDP. It is obsessed with economic growth to the point of mania. From the speech from the throne of December 08 to this budgetary policy statement, we have heard that the government's overriding objective is economic growth so that Kiwis can have a brighter future, prosperity, jobs, education and health, and we shall balance economic opportunity with environmental responsibility as we go. But that excludes the broader notion of societal well-being. All around the world, in Bhutan, Canada and Norway, through the OECD and the UN, work is underway to broaden the measure of economic performance to encompass societal well-being. In New Zealand, our stats and environment departments have been working with other countries to develop indicators of sustainable development. That was the result of some public funding back in June 2000, initiated by the Green Party. That work was professionally done. We now have a report of 2009 identifying indicators of environmental and social criteria. These would broaden the performance indicators of a country along the lines that experts have been calling for since the Earth Summit back in 92. Mr Speaker, I have submitted into the ballot a member's bill which would amend the Public Finance Act to broaden the indicators required in the budget statement beyond the traditional ones of GDP, CPI, unemployment and current deficit. I call upon this government to adopt the bill and incorporate it into its governmental legislative program. If the government were to do so, this strict court of national legislators might accept the deeds of mercy of which I have spoken thus and mitigate the justice of the government's plea towards a different sentence
than what was written into the annals of English literature some 500 years ago.